just want to ask you a couple more about your sort of influences and um, what sort of motivates you. I mean, who, who are the most important people in your, in your life who's had the greatest influence on you? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Would it be I your parents or? Well, you know, I'd say that, uh, I don't know. You know, for me, it's been more of a, a series of life experiences and uh, observing uh, different leaders uh, taking things, uh, uh, you know, uh, th taking things to a, a good place. Um, but it's hard for me to name kind of, you know. Uh, Did you have any mentors or anything? Not, not one specific person or not. I it's more of a collection of different people that I've learned from over the long run. And, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely a good thing to look at the very successful companies that have been built and potentially, you know, over time turned around. And, you know, and they, the my experience at PayPal was really interesting and, uh, and definitely super, you know, it was a growth experience for me to basically just take over the leadership of the company at a time where it needed a lot of change. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and there, you know, it, yeah, the opportunity at the time that John Donahoe gave me to basically uh, take that company to a different destination. And I was the startup guy with, you know, no experience managing more than, you know, 300 people, not right. even, uh, and suddenly inheriting 15,000 people and, and trying to, to turn around a company. So I've, I've been lucky enough to have been given opportunities to prove myself that have been, uh, I think, very good for me, uh, and most times good for, for the people who have uh, trusted me with, uh, with those uh, assignments. But, right. uh, um, you know, and, and you know, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur at heart, so, uh, you know, I, I, I really, really still enjoy spending time with entrepreneurs from uh, all around the world that I feel I resonate with a ton. Right. Um, and so, you know, th th those are, you know, my people. <laughs> so uh, when you think about, you know, managing people and getting the uh. best out of them, I mean, is it the carrot or it is it the stick? Is it, you know, how do you go about that? What is your no, it's theory of management? I mean, uh, you know, you need to, so th th I, uh, th this project particularly uh, is really enjoyable for me because I got to start from a clean sheet of paper uh, to assemble the, the my dream team um, and uh, then go tackle the mission. Uh, and I think, you know, the most important thing is really mission alignment. And I think that, you know, once you're really focused on the goal and once you really have taken it in, so you've taken in the problem that you want to solve for the people that you want to serve. Yeah. Uh, and once you really digest that and you really understand that as a team, as a unit, um, then, uh, you know, it's, it does wonders. And I think that, you know, from there you can build, you know, of course, good management techniques and all these things, but at the core, really alignment on what you come to work for every day is what makes a difference in my mind between an exceptional team and a good team. Because it's easy to get distracted, is it? Because when you're focused on the mission, then all of the things that don't matter get out of the way. And it's really easy to resolve differences when you look at them from the lens of the people you want to serve rather than you know having uh, just uh, pride and authorship of an idea or, or not. It's like, you know, it, it doesn't matter who has the idea as long as it is the best idea to solve the problem that you're coming to work for. Okay. H how are we doing for time? Um, I think we're good. Did you have one last question to wrap up? Okay. Um, talk about some of the things, some of the cool products you're going to develop uh, as Calibra. I mean, what, what are the things we're going to be able to do using the services? Well, first, we hope that we build one of the best wallets ever built, if not the best wallet ever built. Right. You know, that's kind of the ambition. Uh, and really make it really user-friendly for people to basically, you know, onboard this network, move money around the world with a lot of ease, get out of the system with a lot of ease in uh, various regions of the world, which is really not trivial. Mm. Um, and that's the, the singular focus, is really help people basically uh, store send and spend money really easily uh, and at a global uh, scale. So, you know, that in itself is already a tall order that we hope to do uh, really, really well with a great deal of craftsmanship and pride of work well done. Right. Uh, and then we'll layer up uh, up until those, uh, those, you know, basic capabilities uh, going forward. What could be the other things on top of that? 
Well, you know, you think about you know how people will send money to one another, but then there's you know all kinds of different merchant services that you will probably want to provide so that merchants can accept payments and um, expand their addressable markets. Right. I deeply care about small businesses owners and small businesses in general. Uh, it turns out we have 90 million of them on the Facebook uh, network, and the ability for those small businesses to basically sell um, to a global audience to many more people uh, is actually something that is really inspiring to me. So how can we actually get that done um, in a, a really effective way for those small businesses uh, is something that we'll probably go tackle next. Okay. Should we go walk around? Um, I don't know if we have time to do the walk around. Do you have any questions you want to ask them to just begin the walk around? Um, I think so, yeah. Um. All right, because we only have 10 more minutes here. So it's better if we can, we can just do those questions here. <coughs> and then I'll just shoot some of those around here. We don't need to walk around. Sounds great. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's fine. Okay. That works for me. Um, I guess I have to ask you about, I mean, I know you've, you've gone to great lengths to uh, make this distinction between Calibra and, and Libra, and I can understand why. But I think that there are a lot of people who are quite sort of skeptical about that. You know, I this sort of, uh, you know, this project was incubated here, and some of the code is, is probably being developed here. Sure. Um, so, I mean, do you understand why people have a trouble with that sort of distinction that you're trying to draw and that it uh, might absolutely. be for more for PR reasons than for other reasons? Well, trust me, you know, <laughs> if you were uh, experiencing any of uh, our days here, uh, you'd realize that we're very much in a very democrat democratic process where, you know, we have a lot of different constituents at the Libra Association that are involved in decisions and, you know, how we move this forward. So this is definitely not a PR stunt. Right. Uh, and, you know, uh, if it was, it would be ridiculous to put, like, the level of complexity that is currently the one that is required for us to actually deliver on this notion that no single private company or company or entity should control a network, a payment network such as Libra. It should not be something that one entity controls. And I think that this is actually unprecedented, I mm. think. Um, and I, I, I've said this multiple times and, you know, no one has, you know, yet found uh, a precedent in other types of uh, projects before. I, I'm hoping that I can find one that I can use as an example. Right. <laughs> so if you do find one, let me know. But this idea that we've invested so much uh, time, energy, talent, money on building the core technology uh, that underlies Libra, and then that we would give it away, uh, not only give it away in open source, but basically give away the control and the governance of this network that we helped create, and basically uh, remove ourselves to the point where uh, today we're one out of 21 council members of the Libra Association, uh, and we're one out of five on the board. Uh, so our, our role now and our ability to change the direction of the Libra Association is as good as any other member uh, right. now and, uh, and as good as all of the future members that will join and add up to the ranks of the Libra Association. But I mean, practically speaking, talk about the wallet, for instance. I mean, if, you're, if the wallet is sort of there available on the Facebook mm -hmm. network, I mean, surely people are going to use the Facebook wallet and not the other wallet. I don't know. Uh, I think that, you know, wha we definitely hope that a lot of people will choose our wallet. But uh, my belief is that by the time we launch, you'll have many wallets that you'll have the ability to choose for, uh, uh, from as a consumer. And because there's interoperability, you will still get the benefit of Facebook's reach, even though you, as a consumer, wouldn't want to use our product. And so I think that's also fairly unprecedented, this idea that we're going to enable portability, interoperability, and all these things on the network that we've helped create rather than creating a closed ecosystem. Right. Uh, and I also think that by the time the regulatory framework clarifies, you'll see uh, many more traditional players, whether it's banks or existing wallets that have hundreds of millions, for some of them um, consumers, uh, that are already KYC, so that have already passed, you know, authentication and all these things, right. uh, and as a result, that won't have as much friction as we would have, starting from a standstill. Right. Um, that will join and, uh, you know, enable people to transact on top of this network. So I, I, I actually think that we're going to be in a very competitive space by the time we launch. But if you were still president of PayPal and you were thinking about whether to mm -hmm. compete with Facebook on their wallet product, I don't think you would fancy that competition very much. I mean, 
I don't know. I think that I would try to bring all of the assets that I have to bear, and there are many. Uh, and I think that, you know, if there is a look, look, I it is almost like if you're asking if you know there's a world where there's uh, internet that exists. Uh, whether you still want to live in uh, Bolton board land or whether you want to build on top of this new infrastructure that is called the internet. Mm. And I think that you know, I if we're successful the way I envisage it, then uh, everyone over time will want to build on the more efficient, lower cost, faster infrastructure to move money around the world. And, um, and as a result, I think it's going to be a very competitive network and that's definitely the way that we hope it plays out. Because if it plays out that way, then consumers would benefit from a great deal of choice and more competition. And we want more competition because we want prices to come down for consumers and the barriers of access to modern financial networks to come down as well. Okay. I mean, what do you think the key kind of defining factors for the wallet will be in terms of competitive advantage? Well, we definitely have reach. So that's good because we have two uh, of uh, the, the most used messaging apps in the world. Uh, but I think that we will have to do a lot to earn people to earn people's trust, yeah. um, and that's why we're actually committing to keep the data uh, separate from Facebook. And we've created Calibra as a subsidiary uh, is basically to make very strong commitments that we can abide by over a very long period of time to have a shot at getting people's trust over the long run. Okay, great. Uh, just sort of final question. Um, I mean. Ha this must be a sort of tumultuous year of your life, uh, everything you've gone through. I mean, how do you sort of reflect back on it uh, at the end of it? Uh, this has been, honestly, one of the intellectually most stimulating and interesting year of my professional life. And so uh, I wouldn't want to work on anything else. It's uh, really the most interesting, stimulating, and you know, uh, fascinating thing I've ever worked on. So I'm enjoying it a great deal. Thank you. Thank you.